At 4.23 in the morning on May 24, 1943, Commander Peter Gretton stood on the bridge of the destroyer HMS Duncan, leading escort group B-7 through the icy waters of the North Atlantic. Around him, 42 merchant ships carried vital supplies to Great Britain, fuel, food, and ammunition. Everything keeping the island alive while war consumed Europe. But in the depths below them, 30 German U-boats moved in absolute silence. It was the largest concentration of submarine force ever assembled. Admiral Karl Donitz had orchestrated the perfect attack, a wolf pack waiting for the right moment to tear the convoy apart. What Donitz did not know was that attached to the hull of every British escort ship was a device the size of a shoebox. Something so secret that even Churchill didn't know all the details. Something a German engineer, hearing the rumors weeks later, would call a physical impossibility. A British scientist nicknamed it the ketchup packet. In the next 18 hours, this small device would completely change the course of the Battle of the Atlantic. To understand what happened that morning, we must go back to 1940, when Britain was losing the war in the Atlantic catastrophically. German U-boats were sinking British merchant ships faster than they could be built. In a single month, November 1940, 146,000 tons of shipping went to the bottom of the ocean. Churchill would later write that the only thing that truly frightened him during the war was the peril of the U-boats. The problem was deadly and simple, escort ships could not find submerged submarines. U-boats operated brutally. They dove to a depth of 100 meters, where they became completely invisible. British ships sailed above them with no idea they were being hunted. At night, the submarines rose to the surface to attack in the dark, sank the merchants, and dove again before anyone could respond. It was like fighting ghosts. The British had Astic, the precursor to modern sonar, which emitted sound pulses underwater. But there was a critical problem, Astic only worked when the ship was stationary or at a very low speed. During an active pursuit, when the ship accelerated to attack, the noise of its own hull completely masked the echo of the submarine. This created what sailors called the dead zone, the last 200 meters before the attack where the U-boat simply disappeared. The submarine could dive or change course, and the destroyer would pass over it without knowing where it was. Depth charges, 150 kilograms barrels full of explosives, were launched almost randomly. British crews set them to explode at 50, 100, or 150 meters and hoped for luck. The success rate was brutal. In 1941, it took an average of 250 depth charges to sink a single U-boat. And then, in a small room at the Admiralty Laboratories in London, a scientist named Charles Gadeev had an idea that seemed like science fiction. Gadeev's proposal was technically absurd, create a device that could hear a submarine while the ship itself was at high speed. The Naval Defense Committee rejected the idea immediately, declaring it impossible because the noise from the ship's own propeller would mask any signal. But Gadeev did not accept impossible as an answer. His team worked for 14 months in absolute secrecy. The device they developed was revolutionary, a small acoustic transmitter that was towed behind the ship, far enough from the propellers to avoid interference. The apparatus emitted high-frequency sound pulses and captured the echoes reflected by the metallic holes of the submarines. But the true innovation was in the signal processing. They called it the Hedgehog because the final version of the system included a mortar launcher that fired 24 small projectiles in a circular pattern, like the quills of a hedgehog but the scientist's internal name was different. Looking at the red, compact device being installed on the ships, an engineer commented that it looked like a ketchup packet stuck to the hull. The nickname stuck. The difference between the hedgehog and conventional depth charges was revolutionary, the projectiles only exploded on direct contact with the submarine's hull. There were no premature explosions or walls of water blocking the sonar. If you heard an explosion, you knew you had hit the target. More importantly, the hedgehog could be fired while the ship maintained sonar contact, completely eliminating the dead zone. In August 1942, the first systems were installed on escort group B-7. The Admiralty ordered absolute secrecy. Admiral Donitz, on the other side of the Atlantic, had no idea what he was about to face. By May 1943, Donitz was confident. 
For convoy ONS-5, he mobilized 30 U-boats, the largest concentration of force ever gathered against a single convoy. The British escort seemed inadequate, but Commander Peter Gretton had an ace up his sleeve. The convoy departed under grey skies. On May 23, the weather worsened with 10-meter waves and almost zero visibility. Perfect conditions for a submarine attack. At 9 p.m. that night, the first torpedo hit a merchant ship. The battle had begun. Throughout the night, the U-boats attacked relentlessly, but something was different. German commanders noticed that the British escort ships were responding with unusual precision. Whenever a submarine approached, a destroyer appeared exactly in the right direction. At 4.23 a.m., HMS Duncan detected a contact at 1,200 meters. It was U-266. Commander Gretton gave the order to prepare the hedgehog. The destroyer accelerated toward the target, maintaining constant sonar contact. 200 meters from the target, the projectiles were launched in rapid sequence, diving into the water in a circular pattern. Ten seconds of absolute silence, and then, boom! A violent explosion shook the ocean. Three projectiles had hit the hull of U-266. The submarine imploded at a depth of 90 meters. Over the next 14 hours, the scene repeated itself. HMS Vedette detected U-531, two hedgehog volleys resulted in a direct hit. HMS Loosestrife pursued U-381 for 40 minutes, maintaining constant contact before firing. A single projectile hit the conning tower directly, and the submarine emerged violently, split in half, sinking in less than a minute. German commanders began reporting that British depth charges now only exploded upon impact. They didn't understand that it wasn't depth charges at all. By 6 p.m. on May 24, Admiral Donitz received the reports. Seven U-boats were no longer responding. Five others reported severe damage. The attack on convoy ONS-5 was turning into a German disaster. Donitz ordered the U-boats to retreat, but it was too late. During the second night, four more U-boats were destroyed. U-954 tried to dive to 200 meters, but HMS Duncan pursued and fired anyway. U-258 tried to hide on the ocean floor, but the hedgehog detected the metal hull even while stationary. At dawn on May 25, Donuts made an unprecedented decision, he ordered the entire wolf pack to disperse. It was the first time in the war he gave up on a convoy before destroying it. Of the 42 merchant ships, only 13 were sunk. In return, the Germans lost 12 confirmed U-boats, with eight others heavily damaged. It was the worst submarine disaster for the Kriegsmarine up to that point. The Battle of Convoy ONS-5 marked the turning point of the Battle of the Atlantic. In the following months, the Hedgehog was installed on hundreds of Allied ships. The success rate was devastating. While conventional depth charges had a 5% kill rate, the Hedgehog reached 25%, five times more effective. Between May and December 1943, the Allies sank 237 U-boats. German intelligence captured rumors of new British depth charges but considered it technically implausible that a system could maintain sonar contact at high speed. Even when a Hedgehog was recovered from a sunken British ship, German engineers could not replicate the signal processing technology. Karl Donitz would write in his memoirs that by May 1943, they realized they had lost the Battle of the Atlantic. By the end of the war, more than 1,200 hedgehog systems had been installed. Charles Gadeve was awarded the Order of the British Empire. An admiral simply commented that his ketchup packet had saved Britain. Commander Peter Gretton was promoted to captain and continued commanding escorts until the end of the war. He never forgot that May morning in 1943 when a small red device completely changed the rules of the game. Of the 30 U-boats Donuts sent, only 10 returned intact. It was the beginning of the end for German dominance in the Atlantic. HMS Duncan, the first ship to use the Hedgehog in combat, survived the war, but the story of the ketchup packet it carried was never forgotten.